Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and recently someone asked me to watch this video called There Are No Forests on Planet Earth, and they wanted me to give them my opinion on it. So I did that, and I don't have a high opinion of it. <laughs> it's one of these things that actually got really difficult to watch, partially because it kept on repeating the same thing over and over again. So I was like, I'm going to make a video on this, because this is some stupid conspiratorial bullshit. That's the short version of it. But I'm actually going to go and explain why they're wrong. And I have to give a shout out to Professor Stick, because I asked him on Twitter a couple of things which I was just wondering about, and he answered them. So I highly recommend you go and check out Professor Stick's YouTube channel. He does some great stuff over there. Although I'm small and it probably won't help him much at all. So anyway, let's get into this. Oh, and I forgot to mention, they're also flat earthers, so... <laughs> uh. There are no forests on Earth. So here he's trying to tell us that forests that we have seen aren't actually forests. I don't think this guy has access to a dictionary. Can someone please get this guy a dictionary and show him the word forest, please? For those who think the trees were killed just because of wood materials, I want to dispel your claims. Trees are energy generators. They produce constant electricity, oxygen from photosynthesis, food. They have root network and are programmed to exchange data. Our ancestry had a theory. The trees are programmed to keep data from everything on the planet and saving it in the information portal in the carbon fibers. That's fucking amazing! How did I... How did, how did I not know that? Now, can you please provide some proof for that, please? Oh, I'll be waiting here. I have the feeling that you're not going to provide proof. But in regards to your other claims, why would someone want to destroy trees if it's not for materials? Honestly, why would someone want to go ahead and destroy uh, the things that give us oxygen, that give us food? You know... These are things that we need. They need them too. But I'm guessing you're just going to keep claiming that demons want to do that. I don't know the reason, but some sequoias, these vandals left alive. Even put a fence and called wildlife sanctuary. Maybe they just realized that if we keep on killing the same type of tree, we're going to kill all of that type of trees and then there will be none left. So, where are silicon trees? What? You haven't proved that silicon trees exist yet. Can you please prove that silicon trees exist before asking where are the silicon trees? Okay? Oh, by the way, here are our silicon trees. I want to introduce you the museum under the open sky. Stone trees here are just scattered in the desert and also fenced. Everybody today can visit this circus by the name Petrified Forest National Park. In this park, petrified fossils are not common. They are unique. Then, these trees morphed into semi-precious stones. I wouldn't say morphed. It is a long process that lasts millions of years where the organic materials get replaced with minerals. As simple as that. Let's see what Wikipedia is telling us. Special rare conditions must be met in order for the fallen stem to be transformed into fossil wood or petrified wood. In general, the fallen plants get buried in the environment free of oxygen which preserves the original plant's structure and general appearance. Congratulations. You did research. So it's over now, isn't it? You've explained how uh, things get petrified. That's, that's it. You've done your research. We can go home. No? Let's see what else you have to say. Transmorphing wood into semi-precious stones. This is where the lies and ignorance becomes uncontrollable. <laughs> I just have to laugh at the irony there. Trees are not broken. Trees are sown. 
into accurate pieces. Why would someone go to all the effort of cutting something up and then just leaving it there? Why not use it? You, you make no sense whatsoever. Let me introduce to you. This is Devil's Tower, Mesa, or so-called Lacalis, that is formed from a magmatic melt from the Earth's deeps about 200 million years ago. At least this is how Wikipedia is telling us. Let's come closer to our tree stump to look at his fantastically inexplicable columns. Let's look in Wikipedia once again. Igneous rock is formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. Huh? What a smart magmatic melt. He just stand and frozen in appearance of perfect hexagonal columns for 300 meters in the sky. You can synchronize your instruments on these miracle columns. So the first thing is, just because it looks like a tree, doesn't make it a fucking tree. But the next thing is that these columns aren't created by lava just deciding, oh, this is the shape we're gonna form. No, it's actually created from cracking. You see, when magma solidifies, it's still quite hot. So therefore, it can still cool down a lot more. And when it's cooling down, it contracts. When it contracts, it cracks. And therefore, you get the columns. It's simple science. Learn it. And now let's open botany textbook. Let's find structure of any plant. And let's compare it with our giant stump. We won't go deep into this. We want only those facts that will fall into our hands from the stump's photos. There's a word for that. Cherry picking. I want to introduce you a cross section of the stem of flux. Well, well, gentlemen biologists. Are you noticing anything? No? Look, seems like honeycombs in the middle. Oh, way! And they are all hexagonal. Well, well, what a coincidence. If we remove skin around this flux, our stump skin is already removed. Look at the small rocks around it. And guess what? Flux looks exactly like our stump from the bird side. Well, you said it just earlier. It is a coincidence. If you take two things that are completely unrelated and you look hard enough, you'll find some relation between the two. But I think the more pressing issue is that cross-section that you showed. Each of those hexagons represent a cell. Now, there is a limit to how big a cell can get. This is what I talked to Professor Stick about. When you increase the volume of a cell, the surface area of that cell increases as well. But it does not increase at the same rate that the volume increases at. As a cell increases in volume, it needs more carbon dioxide, more oxygen, more nutrients for that cell. These get absorbed through the surface of the cell, so if the cell doesn't have enough surface area to cater to the volume, that cell's gonna be dead. Fibers do not go into the ground vertically. They are gradually bent to transform into the root system like every tree should do. So your argument is essentially because this looks like a tree, that means that it's a tree. Oh my fucking god. Just because clouds look like candy floss doesn't make clouds candy floss. The diameter of our stump is 300 meters at the base. If we sum 300 to 20, we will get the height of, are you ready? 6 kilometers. Just think about it. If a tree was six kilometers high, it would not be able to support its own weight. It doesn't take a genius to work that out. I know people that worked that out easily. They didn't need me to tell them. I am sure that even after such clear evidence, there will be deep sleeping people that will ask for more. Wait, was there evidence in your rambling? Gee, must have totally missed it. Let me introduce to you Giant's Causeway in Ireland. 
noticed something familiar? Take a closer look. Again, these hexagonal columns. Whoa. You're really grasping at straws here, aren't you? <sighs> Just because something has hexagons on it does not make it a fucking tree. Are snowflakes trees? No. Are beehives trees? Fucking of course not. <laughs> Please, tell me, how to stay calm and not erupt fountain of swear words in the direction of science society. I honestly don't know how to not erupt fountains of swear words at you, you fucking moron! Does anyone remember how not cut it, but broken tree looks like? I will remind you. Understood my hint? No? Let's play a game again. Find 10 differences. Coincidence. Do you know what that word means, motherfucker? I want you to look at the highest stumps of our planet that were mined like a quarry and were broke by a blast. For example, three Everest. <laughs> you can't be fucking serious, can you? You already guessed, there is no such thing as rocks on our planet. Well, my life has been a lie, hasn't it? I mean, sure I picked up rocks, but they weren't rocks, were they? No. Fuck me. Guess I got to change my whole mindset because some crazy dude on the internet said that rocks don't exist. I want you to look at these photos. Today we have lots of artifacts which we can't repeat because of certain conditions as lack of technology, lack of equipment or specialists and which are evidence that our civilization at least 200 years ago and before compared to us today was more developed and our today's society are just kids in the sandbox. Here are some examples. Babola Babes. Here is what Lesman that was near it tells us. Sorry for my language, but they are telling us absolute bullshit that somehow Master made it for seven years and polished it every day, like Papa Carlo. Absolute bullshit. You know, when someone puts time and effort into something, they can do some pretty good stuff just by themselves. Just because someone makes a really good painting which looks really realistic does not mean that it's not an actual painting. They just put a lot of effort into it. Something about 1780 to 1815 years, we experienced nuclear war. It's likely not the first time in the world. Shut the fuck up. So you're telling me that the entirety of what we know of history is wrong. Everything. Everything before 1816 is complete bullshit. Never happened. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. The amount of paranoia you need to believe this bullshit is incredible. You need to believe that everybody is lying to you. Every historian ever is lying, or they don't know the truth. And I just find that to be incredible bullshit. It's worse than flat earthers. I mean, this guy is a flat earther, but... It's just so much incredible bullshit to... I just can't handle any more of that bullshit. One thing I want to mention before I end this video is this guy 
thinks that these trees are silicon-based life forms. And when I was talking to Professor Stick, Professor Stick says that he doesn't think it's even possible to be silicon-based, depending on what it means. He says that if they've replaced carbon with silicon as the base organic atom, then it's simply not possible. When doing some more research for this video, I came across this article which basically says that many silicon analogues of carbon compounds just cannot be formed. On top of that, Professor Stick mentioned that carbon makes life possible because it can make four covalent bonds. He says that while silicon can do that, they don't make bonds that are as strong. So I think that puts a nail in the idea of these silicon trees. Anyway, I'm glad I got that bullshit out of my system. <laughs> if you liked that video, leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to check out Professor Stick's YouTube channel if you're into sciencey stuff. He does a lot of sciencey stuff. He's a much better scientist than I am. If there's something you want me to tackle, leave a comment and I'll get round to it when I have time. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.